Hey guys, welcome back. It's Joey again. You're watching Vegas D Tech, and today I'm back with another bike review for you, or actually e scooter review for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at a company called Varla, and this is their product. It's called the Eagle One version 2.0. Let's have a look. So folks, Varla states that this e-scooter can do 40 miles per hour and best a 42 mile per hour range per charge. We're going to go ahead and put it together, take it out to the test course and actually review this bike and see, can the Varla Eagle One version 2.0 hold up to its name and its claim? Well, here's what it looks like shipped. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. Looks like it comes with a couple of skid plates. So you got this design. You got this Varla design right here. Skull action if you like that. And it also has, oh, another like Spider-Man design here. So your choice. Mine looks like it came ripped. Probably damaged somehow. I don't know how it got damaged. The box looks like it's in good shape. Probably got damaged in factory somehow. Wow, it's boxed extremely well, as you guys can see, like one big brick. My God, that is one heavy machine, man. No joke. That's 82 pounds right there. What's in the box? Looks like we have some screws, headlight, an Allen key kit, 13 and 15 millimeter tool. Aha, uh -huh. a cling horn, a main display unit, cards that you use to turn it on. There's two of them right there. And we have charger. And this says it is a 58.8 volt, 2.0 amp charger and a detailed instruction manual.
then the display. And take a look at the cool lights and you'll see different type of, you got, I guess you got breathe. It's like a flow, strobe, and off. So as far as features and specs, the Varla Eagle 2.0 comes with a 20.8 amp hour battery. And it has two charging ports here so you could plug in two battery packs. It does come with one and that is a two amp battery charger. So if you divide the 20.8 by the two, you're gonna get about a 10 hour charge time. Uh, but you have the option of buying an additional battery charger to plug in this side. And if you run them both together in tandem, you should be able to charge this thing from flat to full power within about five to six hours. It does have two 1000 watt motors and that's mind boggling guys. 1000 watts in the back, 1000 watts in the front now if you compare that to the typical bike all the bikes that i've reviewed here they all come with a 750 watt motor just one and that's enough to propel that bike another 750 watt motor enough to propel the electric and this one here has a little 500 watt motor so when you guys combine 1000 plus 1000 dual power motors running at the same time you can see how this thing right here is going to give you some mind-boggling acceleration top end and climbing ability it does have 160 millimeter rotor one in the front and one in the back these are varla branded hydraulic brakes it does come with nice round robust grips that are locked you can see the lock points here on the sides that'll keep it from spinning on you which i do like it does have a thumb activated throttle down below. You have ones that go up and down, and this one goes left to right, which I kind of like better. It feels better, at least for me. Sliding over to the display here, you got a nice color display. Not sure if the camera's picking it up quite well, but it's a very simple display. You've got up here, you're gonna have a, a cruise control, a light icon. When you're in cruise control, this thing will light up with a cruise option. When you see this icon right here, you're going to have dual motor function. And to turn that on or off, you're just going to hold the plus button down for a couple of seconds. That will cycle through single to dual motor. You're going to have your battery of power represented in percentages here, your mile per hour. And you're going to have a tachometer RPM here as you increase your speed. Power assist mode here can be changed from one to five. I think I have this in three. Yeah, so I have three modes here. So good, better, and best. And if you come down here, you're going to see your trip meter and you can cycle it over to your voltage. So when you combine that meter right there with what you have up here, you get a very good true representation of what you truly have left in the cell. It comes with one little bell. It comes with a very bright headlight here. Comes also with brake lights. Not sure if you could see that during the day. And it also has running lights down below. So you got three different type patterns that you can use and this really helps guys to you know get attention not that you are trying to need attention but in a way you do and that's just for safety reasons it also comes with this very nice grip tape for the board to give you guys some solid grip uh, and this is the uh, eagle print that does come with four other type of prints to fit your style if you don't like this one right here it also comes with dual suspension front and rear and they are adjustable more than capable of absorbing all of the imperfections and bumps and cracks that are in the street and to fold this thing up and transport it it's pretty simple all we do here is we've got this big old varla knob on the front that you'll twist and by undoing that you have this safety uh, clamp right here that will come away from the stem and then you're going to pull out your grenade pin which is a secondary safety feature which is right here and then the entire unit should be able to fold right down just like this and then you'll take this little clamp right here and you'll bring this thing down and it will clamp on this little guy back here this little latch and with this you should be able to pick it all up and transport it wherever you got to go
And to put it back together, it's the same thing. Release your clamp, release the latch, bring it up, push it back into place. Then we will make sure to attach this guy, which is gonna prevent the stem from separating on you and make sure to put in your grenade pin. And you are all set to go. Alrighty guys, so that's enough with the features and specs. Let's go ahead and get our helmet on and take this Varley Eagle one out in the neighborhood around our test circuit and see what she can do. Let's do it. All right guys, so just to let you guys know, I don't have a lot of experience when it comes down to e-scooters, but I have a lot of coworkers that have different type of situations where they're asking me about different types of transportation. And this happens to be a good fit for like students that are going to college because they have limited money. Maybe they don't have enough money to actually buy uh, a car and they don't really want the, you know, the responsibilities of having to maintain a car, insurance, registration, you know, smog, gas, all that. And they have very limited space in their apartments, you know, to put stuff in. And they want to bring this thing up and secure it. Or I also deal with, you know, a lot of retired people that want to uh, have some sort of transportation that they could put and tuck away that's portable in their RVs. Yeah, so they say that the uh, e-bikes, even some of them that fold, they just take up too much room and they're looking for something else. And so I said, let me go ahead and take a look at this guy right here and see if maybe an e-scooter might be something that's uh, viable and will, you know, fit them better. Now, guys, I got to tell you, when I first got this uh, Varla e-scooter, the only word that I had for it was terrifying, all right? Yes, because uh, I didn't know anything about how to stand on this thing correctly. I didn't know anything about how to shift my weight, and you do have to know how to do something like that if you've never ridden one of these before, because the acceleration on this thing here, if you don't have the settings just right, it wants to just pull you pull away from you, and if you hit the brakes wrong, you wanna just sail right over the handlebars. So I had to learn how to use my body positioning in order to ride this thing correctly. But once I had uh, the settings all situated correct, then this thing became tame and much more enjoyable to ride. Now this scooter can do 40 miles an hour. Um, I personally do not feel comfortable standing as tall as I am on this. I'm six feet tall and the suspension lifts me almost one foot higher. So I feel like I'm standing vertically seven feet tall on this uh, scooter. Man, did you just see that? It took that hill with no problem right there, guys. That's what I'm talking about. If you buy one of these scooters, you don't wanna buy one that's weak. Cause take a look at this grade right here, right? Some bicycles and the cheaper e-scooters would have a very difficult time climbing that grade. But if you take a look here, just take a look at how nice and easy this one was able to take that no problem at all just flying up this thing here at about 25 miles an hour so this thing has uh three to five power assist modes on an e-bike we would call that pedal assist modes but here we'll just call it power assist i would recommend when you first start off on something like this if this is new to you Make sure that you guys don't mess with the uh, power assist. Keep it, keep it down as low as possible. Learn your balance. There is also an intensity setting on here of how fast this thing uh, will provide power to you. And at first, it was way too strong, guys. It was like, it, was, it, it made it very uncomfortable to ride simply because when I just hit the throttle in any way, shape, or form, it was so twitchy, it wanted to just pull this thing away and it just made it very uncomfortable. So I just set that thing back down to one or two and then it became very uh, easy for me to control. I really like the design of this uh, scooter simply because of the dual function, you know, tires. Like if I wanted to go off into this gravel path down here, this thing has no problem with going to gravel you know, as well as transitioning back over to a regular bike path. You know, these tires on here are 10 inch tubeless design, which is more durable than uh, some of the other stuff that I saw with the uh, tubes in it, because those are very prone to getting thorns and nails in those tires and going flat on you 
but these right here are much more durable. They're more along the line of an actual motorcycle tire. So we're going to get back up on here again, and we're going to, instead of taking the uh, regular trail over there, we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and take off here on the dirt. So like I said, guys, this thing has the ability to take you through grass, gravel, you know, uh, back onto your regular trails, road, street, city, whatever you can throw at it. It's got a cruise control option on it, so you don't have to hold the throttle all day long, fatiguing your hands. Now, I would not recommend doing anything like letting go of this uh, handlebar. I don't, I don't like that at all. I would advise you to hold on to this thing with both hands at all time, or else uh, you could wind up in the ER real quick or, in a, or, or a long stay at the ICU Marriott. Boy, I'm just trying to learn my balance on this thing. I always feel like this thing is gonna just like, if you turn this thing the wrong way, you're gonna lock up and just flip over. But yeah, so just like riding through this park right here, it's got all kinds of ways and you're not limited to just using the walk paths. You know, you got gravel, you wanna roll through, what is this, a playground here? It's got the, the rubberized foam. Braking is excellent, guys. 160 millimeter rotors, it's the same thing that's on my e-bike, right? On a 10 inch wheel, perfect braking, hydraulic no less. Turning radius on this thing, very nice. If you wanna come across grass, come across the grass. Go back on the sidewalk, cool. Take it out in the dirt. Let's go. Alrighty, guys. So we're on the St. Rose overpass here. Five degree switchback. We're going to take this thing up and see how the Varla does on an incline. Let's go. Oh yeah, oh, more than enough power, guys. We're doing, we're doing 20 miles an hour, 21 miles an hour easy coming up that. Again, switch back, heading up the second part of it. 15, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 20 miles per hour on the switchback, guys. No problem at all. Now, man, look, today I got my helmet, I got my gloves, I got everything on that I could have because I gotta tell you, man, riding an e-scooter is completely different than riding on an e-bike. You know, with an e-bike, you've got multiple points of stability and on an e-scooter, you don't. And it takes a lot of effort, man, for you to uh, you know, continuously rock back and forth using your body weight because you got to shift your body weight in order to uh, correctly ride this thing because when you go to accelerate, the uh, scooter wants to just leave you and throw you back, right? And when you brake, it wants to just throw you over the handlebars. So you're constantly rocking back and forth on your legs, which is like giving you a big basic abdominal and leg workout because you're constantly shifting your weight front to back. And like I was telling you guys before, even though the uh, scooter can do 40 miles an hour, I don't even think you need to do that. And there's some scooters out there that'll do 50 plus, and that's just insane, man. I can't even imagine the kind of a wreck that you would get into if you were actually riding around on an e-scooter doing 50 plus miles per hour and you bailed on it. Man, that is a uh, ER visit for sure. You can see here, guys, we're just taking it through the grass. Just ripping through the grass here. No problems at all. I don't know about wet leaves, man. Be careful. I don't want to bail on some wet leaves. But you can see here, the power to get around all terrain. Sweet. Hey, man, if you guys got a ranch and you guys are like, you know, cruising around your ranch and you need to get out there and take a look at your, you know, your lean-tos and your tractors and you want a quick way to get back and forth, 
from the house uh, to your lean-tos and stuff like that, man, this would be a viable option for you because of the suspension. It can take a lot of these bumps really easy. Uh, obviously, it can handle any of this terrain, dirt, trails, grass, roads, streets, multi-purpose for sure. You know, I recommend this for stuff like head down to the uh, convenience store. This has got a little clip on it right down here. There's like a little clip that you could uh, put a bag on it. So you could go down to the convenience store, run down to Burger King, pick the kids up some burgers and such. This would be the perfect option for you for something like that. Um, as far as like going long distances, for me, I'm just not conditioned for it, guys. I cannot imagine. My work is about six miles away. So it's a one-way ride, six miles one direction and another six miles in another. And uh, for the life of me, I just could not, I could not imagine having to stand for 12 miles, man, shifting my weight back and forth, fighting brake and acceleration, brake and acceleration for 12 miles round trip. I, I wouldn't want to stand going like that. I would much prefer e-bike, okay? But now, uh, that being said, this Varley Eagle One, has an option, a, a seat variant, where you could actually attach a seat to it. Yes, that completely changes the game for me, man, because if I can put a seat on this, I have the option to sit down or stand up, which makes this thing much more doable. Hopefully I can get that seat from uh, Varla so that I can attach it and make another video and show you just how that thing looks with the seating option, because I tell you, my back leg, whenever I get home, my back leg is fatigued. The back leg is actually hovered right over the shock. As the shock rebound, it actually throws the, the, it throws the scooter up and down right over your foot, and that back foot becomes an extension of the shock, and your knee, your back knee will start to feel, you know, some fatigue and joint pain just because it sits right over that rear shock. Let's go ahead and try to do a high speed run on this here real quick. I got it set up to maximum power assist and let's go for it. We're at 22, 27, 31, 33, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, I got it up to 39, guys. I don't want to go any faster. It's starting to get kind of squirrely. 39 is good for me, man. I, I'm fairly certain with uh, enough run time on this, you're going to get it up past 40. But uh, 39 is more than enough speed. How odd is that? I'm over here reviewing the Varla Eagle One, and I happen to just see Eagle One construction. Hey, it must be a sign, man. It must be a sign. All right, guys, so it's pros and cons times. What do I like and what do I dislike about this e-scooter? To be honest with you, there's not a lot to dislike about this unless you're being nitpicky. So let's go ahead and get with the pros. So one of the first things that I like about this is the uh, anti-theft system that they have on there using these uh, NFC cards. In order to turn this display on, you have to turn the power on and it will blink and it's going to actually, it's like a transponder in your key. You're going to have to hold this thing right up against this right here and then the power will cut on. Without this thing right here, it's no good. The power will not come on. Uh, an individual cannot just pedal it away like an e-bike where they don't need to necessarily turn it on. They can just jump on and pedal it away. You're not gonna be pedaling or pushing this thing away being that it's 82 pounds. However, if a person really wants something and they got a pickup truck, they could just pick this thing up, throw it in the back and away they go. The next thing that I really do like about this is the fact that Varla gave you an actual e-bike handlebar guys some of these scooters come with these little teeny bars that go out to about here and here and it's just this little teeny dinky little handlebar which is very sketchy and unstable but this guy here guys look at the birth of that look, look look at it that's some stability right there these uh handlebars here they put locking handlebar grips on here just like you would see on an e-bike you know so this thing doesn't just keep twisting Next thing that I have to love on here is the tires. These tires here, man, are three and a half inch, all terrain, knobby street style tires here. And these are tubeless design. They hold 55 pounds and I can rely on these uh, tires here not to get flats, you know, cause they're, you know, the construction of them are a lot thicker, more along the lines of an actual uh, motorcycle tire. Gotta love the fact that they put hydraulic brakes on this thing here, tied into the 160 millimeter rotors. That's absolutely 
e-bike quality on an e-scooter but you're gonna need that with something that can do 42 miles an hour. You definitely need to be able to stop on a dime. Next thing I really like on here is the shock absorber system. Not only is it just a shock, but you do have the option here to spin the spanner left and right to uh, uh, set your preload and give you guys more bounce or less bounce. If you guys wanna adjust your suspension, you've got that thing on the front and the back. And as far as the cons are concerned, if I had to list the con, it's not long enough for me. My front foot wants to go like right about here. I run out of back room here. I really wish that the board was maybe an inch to two inches longer. Or if they were able to take this perch right here and move the perch back a little bit further. But I understand this is all engineering. This is a solid metal and that the shock, the rear shock is integrated from the uh, rear suspension into this perch right here. So it's just engineered that way. You know, so if this thing was like, you know, two inches longer maybe, you would have the option with a little bit more, you know, foot room here to ride flat footed, you know, and not constantly have to have your back foot at an angle, which fatigues your leg. And just for comparison, you know, regular skateboard and then the platform that you have with Varla, you can clearly see just how much longer the traditional skateboard real estate gives you here to slide your foot back and forth. The second thing if I had to gripe about would be the charge time on this, okay? The, uh battery charger that they give you for this is a two amp battery charger um, and you only get one you have the option for two but you only get one and it takes about nine to ten hours to fully charge this from flat you know and if you need to get up in the morning and utilize your scooter again and you've been using it a lot it's not even going to be full power by the time you get up now if that uh battery charger was say a three amp three and a half amp that right there would cut this thing down to, you know, around six hours of charge time. But right now, the only way that you're going to get a six hour reach charge time is if you buy two battery chargers and run them in tandem. So um, I really wish that they were able to provide you a bigger uh, charger, at least a three, three and a half amp battery charger. And I just kind of feel for the price that you're paying for this here, that an integrated horn into the headlight system, like most of these e-bikes have, would be great instead of the uh, old ice cream bell. Folks, I don't have enough good things that I can say about this Varley Eagle One scooter. This guy here is capable, it's durable, it's fast, it's fun, it's reliable. And if you are looking to make a purchase in this class, I can't see you having any regrets in giving this guy a shot. Alrighty guys, that's everything that I have for you today on this review of the Varley Eagle One scooter. If this information was helpful to you in making a purchasing decision and you wanna know more and uh, pick up one of these Varley Eagle Ones for yourself, a link will be located down in the description box below, linking you right to the website where you can go over there and just have a look at this uh, a little bit closer, take a look at the specs and features, see if it's a, a, a good fit for you. I do believe that this scooter is selling for $14.99 uh, down from $17.99, so there's a $200 savings right now if you want to go ahead and pick this thing up. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. And uh, Barla, also, thank you so much for sending me out the scooter to review. You have made yourself one excellent machine, and I do believe that it's going to bring a lot of people a lot of joy and happiness. And uh, with that said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. I need to get out to Lake Mead and do another uh, water report, and I will catch you guys here on the next video. If you guys found this information beneficial, useful, or entertaining, please do me a kindness. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. It helps me to push this thing out onto YouTube, and uh, I really appreciate your folks' support. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. You guys be well. It's Joey. You're watching Vegas D-Tech. You guys take care now. Bye.